Erev Tov, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. And yes, once again, just coming back here on this Crimea issue here. Uh, guys, it's just, we, we've got breaking news again. I mean, believe it or not, we really do. I'm not talking about Russia doing their exercise in the Black Sea's live, live exercise. They're doing that to kind of let NATO know you need to stand down unless you want to deal with us. But right here, uh, what you have here in the Russian language is a statement that there have been skirmishes between the Russian Federation and the Ukraine forces. That's what you're reading right there in the Russian language. Um, and they're taking this from the president's websites, what it says here as well, that there has been skirmishes between uh, the Russian forces and the Ukraine forces on the border of Crimea and Ukraine. Uh, it does not mean that Ukraine has crossed over, but let me just show you guys, just so you can see for yourself here. We'll go to Google Translate so that I can give you a little bit more confidence that what I'm telling you is actually true here. It is in Russian. We go quickly. We translate it over. We'll detect the language. Of course, it is Russian. I already knew that anyway. The exploration of the Crimea. There was an exchange of fire between the soldiers and the Federal Security Services of the Russian Federation. There has been an exchange of fire. It is intensifying. It could spiral out of control, guys. It is not good. Ukraine has massed troops on the Crimean border. They are trying to instigate the war with Russia. Maripol went under heavy shelling for, for two hours. Uh, that's uh, south of Donetsk and eastern Ukraine there. They were shelling the mess out of them. That's Ukrainian forces. And they're talking about here, here, Mr. Uh, Putin, here, you, uh, you know, he's, he's not Putin, but Mr. Uh, uh, Poroshenko here runs around telling the world that they're trying to keep the Minsk Accords. They're not keeping the Minsk Accords at all. They're shelling civilians. They're shelling the citizens there. The essence of time, they just published their uh, August 11th uh, piece here says right here they were shelled so heavily 174 artillery artillery shells were shelled in on them last night a 16 year old girl was wounded in the shelling in Trebinskia village uh, that happened last night they're killing civilians on a regular basis and Vershenko runs around acting like they're keeping their end of the Minsk agreements but yet they're shooting the 122 millimeter grad missiles into this aerial Russell Bentley who we've shared with you on uh, YouTube his channel there we finally found out thanks to you guys bringing this in to us what's going on it is not good it is not good. And Ukraine has provoked it from the beginning. We have watched the United States propaganda lie over and over and over. Brian Whitmore, one of the biggest liars that came in recently on his daily vertical. We shared with you that. That's actually right here even on our, on our newscast the other day. Brian Whitmore, he's quoting UN where UN says that the, he rings the alarm on the record number of civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine. But not Brian Whitmore. No, Brian Whitmore is going to tell you on the Daily Vertical. Hi there, I'm Brian Whitmore, host of the Power Vertical podcast. Watch what Brian is says. The Vertical. Well, it turns out that July wasn't just the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian soldiers. Yeah. According to statistics released this week by the United Nations, it was also the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian civilians. As civilians. Well. Eight civilians were killed and 65 were wounded in July, according to the U.S. That's right. That's in and July. It wasn't much better when 12 were killed and 57 12, wounded. 57 so wounded. in case anybody hasn't noticed that yet, you can pretty much stick a fork in the mid-ceasefire agreement. Well, he's right. it's done. Yeah, it is done. The conflict in the Donbass is shaping up to be a war without end. A war without end. It's a war without end because Vladimir Putin's regime is not going to accept. See, he blames it on Vladimir Putin. But those people are Eastern Ukrainians, not regular Ukraine citizens as he's claiming it to be. He's misquoting the UN paper right there. I keep showing it. You know why I keep showing it? I want you to realize that American propaganda, not just American, this is Obama administration propaganda, is getting us convinced that Russia is the instigator in this. Russia was not the one that toppled the Ukrainian government. In fact, the former government of Ukraine was very pro-Russian to begin with. It was somebody else that toppled them. And they put a neo-Nazi group in there that, wow, even Obama admitted himself that they installed the government in the new government. A pro, 
EU government, a pro-Western government. So why does everybody say that Russia invaded when Russia never invaded? Yeah, Russia has denied that they've had soldiers go in there and fight. That's their bad, because it is true. Russia has had mercenaries go in there and fight in this war to help the people. And I do believe that Russia has also sent in special forces to help out the people of Donetsk, the Donbass region, Luhansk region, etc., in order to keep them from being totally slaughtered. But there again, so has Ukraine. They have had Navy SEALs come in to help them combat and fight the Donetsk people. They've also had uh, U.S. military and British forces fighting alongside dressed as if they are Ukrainian soldiers speaking perfectly American English and British English, etc. So both sides are guilty on that. Neither one of them have a right to call pot, pot can't call kettle black as we say in the American culture. Um, but in this case here, guys, this is nothing but provocation. And now, yes, the news is breaking. We are seeing it now in Russian news as we are monitoring it minute by minute. This is only a few minutes old. I got it within seconds of it coming out. And right there on the president's own website, he is saying that, yes, they have indeed, uh, the violence has begun. They have had skirmishes between Russian forces and Ukrainian forces. Well, they're doing some instigating, no doubt. They are trying to force Russia into a fight. Because why? According to Russell Bentley, who is an American from Texas, who is there in eastern Ukraine, he says that the United States is the one that is pushing Ukraine into a battle with Russia because they want a war with Russia. Is that because... Obama doesn't want to lose power, or they don't want Donald Trump as president, or they're trying to cover up their failed economy. Remember, Russia said that in the month of August, I brought this out on Israeli News Live, in the month of August, they would start a war with Russia. Russia said either they're going, either NATO's going to start a war with us, or they're going to cut us off from the SWIFT code where we can't do any banking with any other country. He said, the Russia said, we don't know which one it's going to be, but he said America will do it because the economy of the U.S. dollar has totally collapsed, and they have to cover that up. Well, guys... Looks like it's shaping up to be just that. And NATO, you know, I mean, Ukraine, let me tell you something to the people of Ukraine that are listening. I'm not against you guys. I'm not against Western, Eastern Ukrainians, either one. I think you're all human beings. You were brothers at one time. Who made you hate one another? Who has made you to kill one another? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought that you're fighting a war just because Obama wants you to fight it? These people here, when, when there was a flood in western Ukraine, the eastern Ukraine, the Russian-speaking people there, raised money for you to help you rebuild your lives and your homes? They don't want a war with you. Russia doesn't want a war with the West. What, Russia's economy was doing really well? Was there a fear with the West? Is there a fear, Mr. Obama, that the Russian economy might do better than the American economy and the American economy might just collapse? I don't know what all these fears are, but guys, this has got to stop somewhere. But you know what? It probably won't do it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.